Hi everyone, welcome back. And if you're new here, it's so nice to have you. This video is going to cover the first little bit of Fabrilage. And let me just tell you, it is extremely humbling. I had such a challenge with this, but now I'm feeling really ready for the next part. I hope you enjoy watching and let me know which one's your favorite. So as I look at the fish prompt, I've just been thinking a lot about one of the photos that I cut out previously. This is the piece that I think would be amazing with the fish. I just love the idea of having these stacked like that, but obviously it covers him. So I wonder if this is something that I do digitally. So when I do that, I will take these in, scan them, move them to be smaller, um, and then stack them maybe in front of him. I think that would be kind of funny. And then I really love this piece. Uh, it has a little poem about fish. So I wonder if I could cut that out and have it around him instead of this fish. I feel like too, we're getting into the connotations of some of the original Guinness ads. They were about fish and riding a bike. Um, so I wonder if I could cut off the top of this and put it on top of the bike as well as an option. I use this piece as a demonstration for how I digitize my work. Uh, you can go check out my last video if you want to know the full process. But here you can just see I bring things in and with Febrilage, since it's a, such a fast challenge, I usually take some digital liberties. Like you can see the fish in the bowls is a very different size and even this text I'm going to change up a little bit. Other than that, I usually do some very light editing to the color correction just to make sure that it looks like what it looks like in person. So it's only day two and I'm already feeling a little bit screwed just because I had one of the longest days of work and now I have to create something after just a mind numbing day. But that's why I'm going to turn to my theories. I think that when in doubt, uh, turn to something that you know and have familiarity with. And I've already put these aside. So I did think that I was going to make one for smile. Uh, I have pieces put to the side that I'm also going to grab and just kind of look through. But I figured that this could be potentially an explosion piece. And this is something I just found. So I could picture like a family having a nice picnic and then having this like bomb go off in the background. So I'm just gonna leave this here, but even this, <laughs> I know it's the first one on the pile, but I was kind of thinking about this photo with this um, or something that's in black and white. That way it's like a flip of what I usually do.
paper to be a bit too heavy for itself. I'm guessing this is a super old one, probably like the 50s. Um, so I'm just going to cut off the bottom half. Text or no text is always hard. I know that this piece is amazing without text, but I think this is kind of funny because it kind of talks about how like this happy moment can burst into flames any second. Like, although it looks happy from the outside, maybe these kids are having like a terrible time or, you know, they're just like acting like everything's okay when it's not. I think the lamp is perfect too because it hides that pipe, right? So even though it's in the background here, it's not as like obvious and it doesn't look that crazy, um, but I think, Maybe even, yeah, I think this is like perfect. So at this point, I'm going to scan in these pieces together and then this background piece and then clip them all together online. Okay, it's day three. I've left my desk exactly how it was last night. It is a mess. Uh, the prompt for today is mushroom. And I have this piece and I'm not really into doing pieces with like mushrooms or space and all that stuff. I just feel like it's kind of a cliche for art right now. So I've had this done for a little while and I've just, I really like the way that it looks, but I haven't really thought too much about it past this. And I was just wondering if like I could put mushrooms coming through this. It's on like a mossy log already. So I feel like that would just kind of tie in with the whole theme of it and make it look like it's about like um, nature and this like, like 
a disappearance of the frog, for example, and maybe like the mushrooms are like eating where it used to be. So this is the first photo. It's so beautiful. I think it's like a French artist. I had cut out this frog to use for Febrilage, but you know, I'm still using it in this way. Um, and I just love the color. So I wanted to play around with which way this might go. It definitely still needs to look like a frog. Uh, the hands are great for that, for sure, that it already looks a lot like it. But I'll quickly just play around with this and see what looks best. And now it's febrilage time. I think the mushrooms are pretty close to the top, so that's lucky for this one. Already you can probably see what I was seeing. Look at these colors. The oranges and reds are almost the exact same as the ones in here, and it has this brown tones, this undertone brown. Just the blues are kind of the only different thing, but I think that that's in lovely contrast. Okay, and last but not least So right now I'm just deciding if I want to cut off this white border. I'm liking it the way it is, but then we also have this one, so I'm wondering if maybe this one goes or it's this one. I don't like both. Right off the bat, I like having this in the corner. I think it fits nicely. It draws your eye this way. Usually when you do that, you want something contrasting on the other side. And I do think that this helps balance that out. This could work eventually, something like that. I'll cut out the bottom part. With this piece, as I'm moving things around, my one worry is that I just, again, I don't love it. I think it's interesting, but I think that the piece without the mushrooms was kind of cool in the way it was. It wasn't something I was super proud of, but I, I just really thought it was an interesting piece. Usually I can do something every day and it be fine, but when you have a prompt, it's a little bit more difficult sometimes to get out exactly what you're looking for. This might be one of the ones that I don't glue down ever, but I use for the sake of febrilage and then archive after the event. <laughs> So as I was staring at this, I just kind of thought about the pieces that I didn't use. So, you know, we have these, which kind of are interesting. And because this one already has negatives, I wonder if there's just too many mushrooms on here right now. And maybe something like this would be interesting. Like it's kind of cool to show like the extinction um, like this. And again, I don't, love it, but I do think it has a really interesting message. It's 
So usually when I do Feverlage, I have everything laid out on my desk next to me, but my desk has been a mess. So maybe the reason why I've been stuck and not doing as well as I should be for the last couple of days or not appreciating them as much as I should is because my desk is a mess. And maybe I need to start laying out those things and then try again with this piece. I really can't get it down to less than two piles like this and I don't want to stack too much because this whole pile uh, this one is all pieces that are basically done but need like one more element. This is my explosion series that I keep out all the time because I work on it. And then I have just another series that I work on all the time so I definitely have to keep these out. And then this is all my Fabrilage stuff slash pieces that I've just found and I think might work for some of them so I'm keeping that all there. And then this side of the desk I'm going to poke all of these onto in a nice little layout so that I can just grab and go. And then we're going to redo this one or give it some little pizzazz. So we're going to do blank slate and try with some of these pieces. Usually when it's not Febrilage and I'm having this much struggle with creating a piece, I usually just kind of take off the day, but in this case we're not really allowed to, so I'm just going to do my best to try once more. I'm not going to lie too, I think because I've told myself so much to not use mushrooms since it's a cliche that I'm literally struggling in my brain to think creatively with this prompt. This one's a little bit in advance, but I saw this together, like I saw this background and I just love it. It's so beautiful and I had the feet right next to this page and I was just like, this kind of works really well. Like this shoe coming out of the mountain, maybe I'll cut this and then have it like popping through. And then I know I was talking about how much I was struggling with using mushrooms, but like what if I poked these in? to the ground like that um, and had them like stepping on them but I love where it's going and all I have to do is just cut out the little laces so I think that this is what I'm going to do for shoes. One thing that I might fix digitally is this so I'm gonna have to either fix the jean which is what I think I'm gonna do like I can just fix that in post uh, and then the original would be like this but I'm just gonna play around with it and see um, I just like I like where it's going so far it's I'm surprised. I started off looking for cactuses through all of these National Geographics. Uh, I didn't really find exactly what I was looking for though. I didn't really know how I felt about the prompt cactus, but I really liked the idea of using this desert surrealist feel to it. Uh, I found this that I've been holding on to for so long to use, and I thought that it was kind of interesting together. It was kind of giving a little Salvador Dali, uh, but I just saw these pieces and an outdoor furniture piece kind of felt like the right move here.
After struggling to find cactuses, I used my Extraordinary Things to Cut Out and Collage book. This is a book that's just full of things that you can cut out. I don't really recommend it personally because if you look at these photos, they're almost impossible to cut out the way that they're done. Uh, I really wish this was like a digital catalog versus a print book. For this piece, laying out all those different pieces really paid off. I was able to use so many of them and it really got my creative flow going again. Once I found the sunflower, I was hooked. I really liked it in the background, but then it meant that this blue sky wasn't really working for me anymore. I looked through all these different books to try to find some interesting backgrounds. I was finding that anything too plain wasn't really working for me, and anything too bright was just looking like some sort of psychedelic uh, look, uh, which is kind of fun, but it's just not really the vibe that I was going for here. I'm gonna go ahead and cut out the background and just try a whole bunch of different things. Since the cactuses have such small little pricks on them, I just wanted to scan these in before I actually got down to cutting them. Just in case I made a mistake, the digital copy wouldn't have an issue. When making more surrealist pieces like this one, I like to think about who would live here, like who belongs in this scape that I'm creating. And so for me, I found this little desert mouse. Uh, I think it's like a gerbil or something, but it has like the Latin name on it. Uh, it's an African desert uh, gerbil. I thought it was so cute and I thought it would be really funny to just be sitting on the sofa. At this point, I'm really not sure what to put into the TV, but I know I want to put something interesting. I'm also going to add a window in the background. I think that that would be really cool against that black part of the dune. I'm trying just every type of background at this point. I'm really not liking the ones that I'm finding. I think that some of them are really interesting, but it's not what I'm going for. I think that the foreground needs to be more of the focal point and the background needs to be in the background. I still want it to be interesting though, so I'm finding this a little difficult, so I'm going to try to find some free images online just because I'm not really liking any of the ones that I'm finding. Even digitally with the entire internet behind me, it took me a really long time to decide what this was going to look like. I liked the purple ones and I thought that they were great. They gave so much drama to the piece, but I also didn't want them to be too intense that they took away from the piece. But at this point, I still needed something for the TV. So I thought that maybe it would be a good idea to take one of the more bold backgrounds and put it into the TV. I was just about to export this piece and I couldn't figure out what was missing. This is the problem with digital sometimes is you have to remake the piece and I almost forgot the cactus, which is pretty hilarious since the prompt is cactus for this piece. I'm definitely finding this piece a little bit busier than what I usually do, but I think it's kind of quirky and fun and I do really like the outcome of it. I think it's kind of just really interesting to look at. Although the beginning of February has been a challenge, I'm just really enjoying it and I really hope that you are too. If you want to keep up to date and keep the live feed of this going, uh, you can follow me on Instagram. It's at Flanzella. I hope you enjoyed this and please like, subscribe, and hit that notification button to my channel. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you really enjoyed and I definitely have another February video coming your way.